Hi friends, I'm Tori Sindor from the Crane Estate in Ipswich. We're a property of the Trustees, which is the largest preservation and conservation organization in Massachusetts, protecting 118 special places across the Commonwealth. Today I'm going to show you a fun at-home activity that's accessible for all ages, paper making. I welcome you to share in the comments any questions you have, where you're joining us from, and I'd love to see your projects after you're done. So the first thing you need to make paper is paper. <laughs> and I guarantee you have this around. Maybe you've got old greeting cards with their envelopes, envelopes of any sort, the pre-addressed ones that you're never going to use, old shopping bags, non-glossy magazines or wrapping paper, uh, any old printer paper or anything that you have. All you're going to do is tear that up. into smallish pieces. Get yourself a nice collection of small pieces of paper, throw that in some hot water to soak until it's soft, and then you'll use your food processor or blender to make that into a nice pulp. Here is some pulp that I've made from random envelopes and junk mail and trash pieces of paper that we'll be using for our paper today. You also see some of my example paper was made with recycled shopping bags, uh, which is why it's brown. The color of the pulp that you use is going to be the color of the paper that you get. So if you want to try using some colored papers, uh, throwing in random bits of things to try and get a multicolor effect, the world is your oyster. The next thing you're going to need is a tub to hold some water and eventually your pulp. Uh, I've got a nice plastic tub here, but what works great for this is a rectangular baking dish. Really anything that's going to hold some water, you want a couple of inches in there. Next is our mole and deckel. Now this is what might look intimidating, what you probably don't have just lying around your house. I ordered mine from woodendeckel.com. But you don't have to order one. If you have two old picture frames sitting around uh, and some extra screening of any kind, window screening, whatever, uh, cut out a piece to fit your frame, staple it on, you've got your mold. If you've got a matching one to go on top to be a decal, great. But you don't even need that. You can use just the mold with the screen. And if you don't have any screening around, can't be bothered to do that, you don't even need that. I'll show you at the end how to make just really no-nonsense, very minimalistic paper. So I'm going to show you first using the full mold and deckle, uh, then using just the mold, and then using just our plain old kitchen sponge. So you're going to need one of these. You're also going to need some what's called couching sheets. So these can be, you can see these are just normal uh, cleaning cloths. You can use old cleaning cloths, rags, dishcloths. You want something of a fairly close texture, um, something absorbent. You don't really want a terry cloth for this. But play around, see what works for you. Um, not a lot of ways to mess this up. So, what we're going to do to get started, is we're going to take some of that nice pulp that I made. Just <laughs> grab yourself a nice handful. And we're going to get that going into a slurry in our water here. You want to go to, you're going to want to put uh, quite a bit in. Remember the amount of pulp that you put into your water to make your slurry is going to directly affect how thick your paper is. So it's going to be one of those things that you experiment with. You're going to have to play around with it. Uh, see what kind of thickness of paper you like. See how much pulp gives you how thick a piece of paper, uh, and just have fun with it. Let it be kind of an experimental time. Make myself a nice slurry here. And all I'm doing when I'm putting this in is just breaking it up with my fingers. All you want to do is just nicely disperse that paper pulp with the water so it's not lumpy. Now at this point, you can get creative with it. <laughs> you can put in anything you want. 
Uh, you can see some of the papers that I've made. I've included some uh, flower petals and flower seeds. This is a great way to make seed paper uh, using herb seeds, flower seeds, whatever you like. Uh, you can make interesting papers with different kinds of yarns thrown in, different textures there. You can try throwing in some glitter. You can really throw in anything you like. So for this one I'm going to try throwing in some pink pulp from an envelope that I received. We're going to see how that goes. I think to really experience the fun of paper making, you have to let go of any preconceived ideas of perfection <laughs> and just go with it and see what happens and let that be the fun of it. So we've got a nice slurry here. I'm just going to wet my sponge because I forgot to do that. As we know, sponges don't absorb terribly well until they're already wet. All right, so I've got a nice wet sponge here. And what you're going to do to pull a sheet of paper using your full mold and decal, so you're gonna hold them together. You want the screen side facing up. And then you're going to want to put your decal if you're using one on top. You're gonna to hold those together as one piece and then you're gonna use a scooping motion. So I'm gonna go in from one side, go under, I'm going to jostle it around a little bit so everything gets kind of evenly distributed, and I'm going to come straight up. And let some of that water drain off. And kind of clean up your sides just to make things easier. At this point, we can gently remove our deckle. So you can see here that I've got a sheet of paper that is soaking wet and really not a paper at all but a, just a pile of pulp on top of my screen. Now to help it become paper, I'm going to scoop my water vat out of the way and bring over just a plain old drying pad. So this is one of the pads that I use under my dish rack. <laughs> if you use just a towel, really anything is fine. This I'm only using to be absorbent, um, so you don't even really need one. If you want to just work right on top of your work surface, no problem. So here's where you're going to need your couching sheet. You're going to lie that down. This is what the paper is going to stick onto, and this is what you're going to move the paper around on until it's dry. So we're going to take our paper, we're going to put it down on one side, and we're just going to flip it right on top of our sheet. Now we're going to use our sponge to get in there and absorb all of that extra water. So in doing this, I'm compressing the paper into an actual sheet rather than just a pile. And we're also getting some of that extra water out, water that won't have to dry out of it later, getting it nice and flat, and helping it release from the screen. You're going to see that all of the paper you make is going to have, if you're using a screen, it's going to have a, a subtle screen texture on it. You can see here, it looks a little bit like a screen, and that's just going to happen. Uh, if you want to try to use a finer screen, you can try that. You can try out different methods. Um, if you want to really flatten it afterwards, I mean, you can iron it, you can do other things to try and get that texture out or you can embrace it as part of the rustic charm of handmade paper. So when you've taken most of the water out with your sponge, you're just going to take one end of your decal and start lifting it up. And if it doesn't lift up very easily, you can keep on getting some water out of there. You want to be gentle at this point because at this point your paper is 
more of a compressed sheet, which means that it can tear. Of course, if anything goes wrong, <laughs> this really is still just pulp. You can always just put it right back into your vat and try again. Part of the beauty of handmade paper. So I've just loosened it gently on the sides here so I can start to just pull that off. So there we have one sheet of paper that has been pulled. Pretty nice. I'm going to put that to the side and show you what it looks like to use just the decal without, or I'm sorry, just the mold, to the screening part, without the decal. You can see that the decal basically just gives us a shape to work within, right? It's given us those nice clean lines on the sides. You're never going to get terribly clean with handmade paper. You can see in my example here, these ones were all made with the decal. And so they've got straight edges, mostly, <laughs> but they're never going to be razor straight. Um, if, again, if you want to clean those up, make them more look like actual paper, you certainly can. You can certainly cut those edges onto straight lines. Uh, when we use just the decal, with, or just the mold without the decal, we're going to end up with much more organic edges, and you'll see why that is. Scooch this out of my way. Bring our pulp vet back in. Give that a good stir. You want to see how it's going. Every couple of pieces of paper, you'll probably want to put some more pulp in. So if we're going to use just the mold, we're going to do this, exactly the same thing. We're going to go straight down, shuffle it around, now when we're not using the decal, we don't have as much of a concentrating power. We don't have those sides to really uh, capture a larger area of the pulp and pull it up. So don't be afraid to use your hands to really pile it on there. So you can see when I pull that up already, it's, it's going to be messy, right? We don't have anything giving it clean lines. So you can go through, clean it up a little bit yourself. Give it some more defined edges. This is also a great time if you want to try doing something more fun, more of a, a novelty shape. A heart shape that I made that way. Just free-handed, uh, throwing pulp together in the shape of a heart, pulling it exactly this way, and then just shaping it on the decal. I'm sorry, the mold. <laughs> Keep getting those two mixed up. The mold is the part with the screen. side by side, the one that used the decal with the mold, and the one that used just the mold, just the screening without the top part. So I'm going to put those to the side and show you one last thing, which is the most, uh, most minimalist possible way to do this. So I'm going to pull this right back in. Now, this method, you're just going to use a sponge, and you're going to use uh, as a containment device, a, a cookie cutter. <laughs> uh, the cookie cutter might be optional. You can play around with this. You can play around with just piling up wood pulp into a shape uh, and see what happens. So I'm just going to throw a bit more pulp in here. I've got myself a little squirrel cutter on my sponge. Apparently all I have in the house is woodland creatures. <laughs> um, but you know, any, any quick cutter you have, really any shape you have to contain some pulp uh, will work just fine. Obviously, more, uh, more simple shapes will work better. Uh, I'm going to have to struggle a little bit with the ears and things on this squirrel. But all I'm going to do is just get this a little bit wet here. And then just start piling some pulp in. You're going to want to try and support it so you don't have gaps that the pulp is going to pour out of. Keep it a little bit wet in there. I 
Make sure your pulp is getting into all of the corners, all of those little ears and places. This is a great method using cookie cutters to create gift tags or other fun little things. So what I'm doing now is I'm just pushing the pulp down from the sides. It's just going to help it uh, keep its shape and be more of a clean shape when I take it out. I'm just pushing it down off those cookie cutter sides into the center. And then I'm just going to clean this off a little bit. Because again, that's just going to help keep our shape more clean. And we take it off. You might need a small tool <laughs> to help you get some of the pulp out of those smaller areas. So now we've got a squirrel sitting on a very wet sponge. All right, sorry about that. I didn't realize my camera had cut out on me again. So here I am with one final squirrel just to show you where I got cut off. So I've got my squirrel cleaned up on my sponge and I'm just going to give it a really gentle squeeze to get that extra water out. I don't want to disturb my squirrel too much, but I do want to make sure my sponge isn't dripping wet when I do the transfer. So scooch that to the side. Bring in my cooching sheet here with my spoiler alert squirrels. <laughs> Get myself a nice new area of that. So now you're just going to gently remove the cookie cutter shape from your sponge. Again, this is still very pliable, so you can help all those delicate areas define the shape a little bit better. And then just get it how you like it. Now you're going to want to do the transfer, so I'm just going to turn it over onto my couching sheet. Here I'm just going to give it a small tap. Really don't want to squeeze it because my sponge is so wet. Just going to gently release that, and then fully wring out my sponge. Now, press down in the extra little bits, and I can give it its final press. Get some of that extra water out, flatten it down. And there's our squirrel. So there you have it. Three different methods of paper making. You've got your clean edges that use the mold, uh, the deckle with the mold. You've got your more natural edges that use just the mold. And then a fun method of using nothing but a sponge. Uh, so I hope you have fun experimenting with different types of paper and different methods. And I'd love to see what you come up with, so make sure to share them back here. Thanks for joining us. I hope you enjoyed our activity today. You can find more online content at thetrustees.org forward slash at home or by visiting our YouTube channel. The Trustees is a nonprofit organization that is supported by people like you. Please consider donating today or becoming a member simply by visiting thetrustees.org forward slash join us. See you next time.